Thing. Order! Oh, order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! The Attorney General in the U.S. state of Massachusetts is to begin an investigation into claims that information from millions of Facebook users may have been used by a data company during the 2016 U.S. presidential election. A former employee of Cambridge Analytica claims that 50 million profiles were accessed. The two companies deny any wrongdoing. Well, with me is our business correspondent, Joe Lynham. Um, what's the background to all this, Joe? Yeah, it's all a bit confusing, Clive, so kind of bear with me. It all started with an app developed at Cambridge University which harvested Facebook profiles and that of all their friends on Facebook. It then passed that information to Cambridge Analytica and Facebook ordered uh, that company to delete all that personal information a few years ago. In the last 24 hours, Facebook says that all the information wasn't deleted and has ordered those accounts to be suspended. Now a whistleblower has come forward and says that 50 million Facebook profiles were used in the US presidential election in order to target very sp specific messages to very specific people in favour of Donald Trump and against Hillary Clinton. So now we have the Attorney General of the state of Massachusetts saying that their residents deserved answers immediately. In parallel, the Information Commissioner's Office here has launched an investigation. It says there may be circumstances in which Facebook data may have been illegally acquired and used for political purposes. Facebook flatly denies that there's been any breach and said that its users knowingly provided all that information. Cambridge Analytica has also denied any wrongdoing, saying uh, that it only receives and uses data that has been obtained legally and fairly. OK. Joe, many thanks. Joe Lynham there. Facebook has suspended Cambridge Analytica, a consultancy firm which claims to have helped put Donald Trump in the White House. Tonight, their former head of research in his first broadcast interview reveals how he and others got access to the data and claims that the company went on to act in a grossly unethical manner. Andy Davis has this report. In an era of big data and fake news, political leaders are changing, and so too the way they campaign. What you post on social media is being watched, being used, and what you see is crafted like never before. And bestriding this vast digital frontier is Cambridge Analytica, a company which trawls personal data to try to predict, then alter voter behavior. A company which claims it was pivotal in getting Donald Trump elected, but which today, extraordinarily, has been suspended from Facebook. Through this former insider, we can reveal it involves a data grab of not just hundreds of thousands of user profiles, but around 50 million. And accusing Cambridge Analytica of this and more, their former director of research, Chris Wiley. If we look at what Cambridge Analytica does online, it's coercive. People don't know that it's being done as well. It's time, says Wiley, for us to know more about the methods of Cambridge Analytica. Computers are better at understanding who you are as a person than even your co-workers or your friends. This is an information war, he says. Social media is the battleground and you are the target. It weighs on me that I played a pivotal role in setting up a company that I think has done a lot of harm to the democratic process in a lot of countries. We begin this story in Cambridge. It's 2013 and at the University Psychometric Centre, they're delving into the world of Facebook and psychology into what glimpses into the soul might your Facebook likes reveal. Cutting edge research, which Chris Wiley was quick to spot and now helps explain. On social media, you curate yourself. You put so much information about who you are in one single place. Um, so whenever you go and you like something, you are giving me a clue as to who you are as a person. And so all of this can be captured very easily 
and run through an algorithm that learns who you are. When you go to work, right, your coworkers only see one side of you. Your friends only see one side of you. But a computer sees all kinds of sides of you. And so we can get better than human level accuracy at predicting your behavior. Really? Yes, absolutely. Some dispute that. But for Chris Wiley, then just 23, the notion was as seductive as it was potentially lucrative. The company he worked for, Strategic Communications Laboratories, or SCL, specialized in psychological operations for the military. And for him, Facebook was now the richest of canvases on which to not only read minds, but change them. Which is what brought Chris Wiley to the attention of SCL client Steve Bannon then boss of the online magazine Breitbart, later Donald Trump's chief strategist. What did Steve Bannon want? Steve wanted weapons for his culture war. That's what he wanted. And that's, that's we, we, we offered him a way to accomplish what he wanted to do, which, in, was, which in, was change the culture of America. Bannon's big idea, says Wiley, was this. Could they replicate the academics' work profiling people's personalities on Facebook on a massive scale across the American electorate? They had the money from billionaire Republican backer Robert Mercer and his daughter Rebecca. I'm Alex. I'm the CEO. And through Chris Wiley, their specialist, Cambridge academic Alexander Kogan. Already on Facebook, permitted to gather users' data for research purposes, but who now agreed to get much more and share it commercially. The blueprint for the company which would become Cambridge Analytica. Kogan didn't make any money off of it. He, didn't, he, he, did, it, he did it for free. Um, and what he got out of it was the giant data set, and what CA got out of it was also data. Everyone got data. Um, but Cambridge Analytica paid for it directly. If you look here in the underlying source code... Um, and which, which I wouldn't normally see. No, you wouldn't normally see. Um, it worked like this. Thousands of Facebook users were paid to download an app to fill out a personality survey with their consent, which in turn let Dr. Kogan capture the user's underlying data and then share it with Cambridge Analytica. So very simplistically, you're going into the code behind the Facebook page, you're dragging out these ID numbers, you're putting them into, a, into an algorithm, and, With, and out, out comes a prediction of how you're likely to vote. Yes. Simple and smart, because the app didn't just mine the respondents' data, crucially it swept up that of their friends too, those who hadn't adjusted their privacy settings. Imagine I go and ask you, I say, hey, if I give you a dollar, two dollars, could you fill out the survey for me? Just do it on this app. And you say, fine, right? I don't just capture what your responses are. I capture all of the information about you from Facebook. But also, this app then crawls through your social network and captures all of that data also. So by you filling out my survey, I capture 300 records on average, right? And so that means that all of a sudden, I only need to engage 50,000, 70,000, 100,000 people to get a really big data set really quickly. And it scaled really quickly. It, we were able to get upwards of 50 million plus uh, Facebook records in the span of a couple months. 50 million? Yeah, over 50 million records from Facebook using this, using this method. And how many of those people behind those profiles were aware that their profiles had been used in this way? Almost none. Almost none. And so, claims Wiley, began a Republican big data gold rush with Steve Bannon, alt-right ideologue, later a Cambridge Analytica vice president, leading the charge. Should those friends' profiles have been used in the way that they were? I don't think so. I think that, um, you know, it was a big mistake to use this method. Um, but why Facebook didn't you know, make more inquiries when they started seeing that, you know, tens of millions of records were being pulled this way. You know, I don't know. You would have to ask Facebook that. But Facebook, at least in a technical sense, facilitated the project because they, they had applications that had these permissions in the first place. 
Facebook learned of this in 2015, and yet it's taken them until today to come out publicly and say this never should have happened. They've yet to acknowledge that this involved around 50 million users, instead talking of 270,000 plus friends. They've also been at pains to stress this wasn't a data breach in the sense that users by consent and friends through their default privacy settings agree to Dr Kogan capturing their data and they say they've since improved their systems. But Kogan, according to Facebook, lied to them and violated their policies by passing on the data to Cambridge Analytica. At the time that you were taking this data off Alexander Kogan, which was yeah. principally solely for academic research purposes, you knew you were treading a very thin ethical line, presumably. I think, I think, everyone, I think, I think everyone knew that you know, we were wading into a gray area. Um, it, be, it, it, it was an instance of, if you don't ask questions, you won't get an answer that you don't like. Cambridge Analytica rejects this, arguing they had assurances from Dr. Kogan that his actions were in line with Facebook's protocols. Kogan, in turn, claims he had the right to use it for commercial purposes. They and Chris Wiley all assured Facebook some time ago that they deleted the data as requested. But Facebook have now revealed some of that data reportedly might still exist. Hence their dramatic decision to suspend Cambridge Analytica, Alexander Kogan and Chris Wiley from Facebook while they investigate. Did you delete it immediately as requested? I had already deleted it. I had, I, when they sent me, when they sent me the, um, the, the letter that you're referring to, I didn't have the data. So, Did they um, check that you'd deleted the data? No, they were just satisfied with the form. The only, the only contact that I had was, here's a form, fill it out and send it back, and, and it's done. So they, they took your word for it, that you had deleted the data of over 50 million Facebook profiles. Yeah, they, they didn't, didn't do anything aside from sign this form. So just how significant was this data anyway? Of no use is Cambridge Analytica's position. Fruitless is how their boss described the project to MPs recently here in Westminster. Yet Chris Wiley claims it was anything but and foreshadowed worse to come. We spent almost a million dollars doing this. It wasn't some tiny pilot project, it was the, the core of what Cambridge Analytica became. It allowed us to, to move into the, 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 the hearts and minds of American voters in a way that had never been done before. By the time Cambridge Analytica had been hired by the Trump campaign. My first hour in office, those people are gone. They had profiles from numerous data sets on more than 230 million Americans, or so Cambridge Analytica boast. This is real data from uh, the Republican primary. Enabling them, as their boss Alexander Nix showed Channel 4 News two years ago, to micro-target different personality types with bespoke, emotionally resonant messages. Someone who's neurotic um, is someone who's uh, quite emotional and might respond, in this case, to a stimulus of fear. From stimulating US Republican campaigns to elections in Africa, Asia and beyond, Cambridge Analytica are now the big data strategists with the big name. Some allege, however, with little time for ethics. Among their number now, the former insider who claims there's a dangerous alchemy to Cambridge Analytica's art. There is a lack of awareness. It is coercive. People, if I am studying you and I have enough information about you because you've curated your entire self online and I capture that, I can, I can anticipate wh what are your mental vulnerabilities? What cognitive biases might you display in certain situations? But haven't I and volunteered that information? And I can, I can information? exploit that. But are you saying that Cambridge Analytica lies in its political messaging? Because that's something they, they would completely deny. They, 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 they knowingly misrepresent the truth um, in such a way that is conducive to their objective. What's your proof for that? I was there. 
uh, we worked on we worked on all kinds of experiments about what 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 would what would lead a person from A to B. But if you're working on behalf of a political client, you're allowed to try and persuade voters. Persuade, about not your, manipulate. About your message. Persuade, not manipulate. There's yeah. a difference. But, but I ask you, what is the evidence for manipulation as opposed to trying to persuade? This gets at the heart of, you know, why is it that you're taking this psychological approach? Why do you need to, you know, study neuroticism in people? What's going to make them fearful? It is the, 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 the you know, what is, the, what is my previous? I was there. I was there. I set it up. I was the research director. Like, this is what it is. Some people might say it's rank hypocrisy for you to sort of try and claim the moral high ground now, but at the time when you were involved, you were instrumental in all of this. Totally. You, you yes, allowed I was. it to continue. In fact, yeah. you, were, you were at the heart of it. I was. I was instrumental. I was at the heart of it. I agree with you. Um, but I was naive. I made a mistake. I made a big mistake. Um, and that's why I'm talking to you, um, because the very least that I can do is to own up to that mistake. Why is Wiley speaking out now? Revenge, perhaps, following an acrimonious legal dispute with Cambridge Analytica after he left? Not so, he says, it's remorse at having been involved in the first place. Cambridge Analytica denies Wiley's claims of a coercive, manipulative and untruthful approach, dismissing these as pure fantasy. His legal fight with them, they say, has left him with an axe to grind, driven by malice and intent upon damaging the company, a company which they stress uses techniques similar to those other commercial agencies use. But I know that there is bad blood between you and Cambridge Analytica. You had a falling out. You know, there was a legal dispute. Um, is this really about revenge? No. Because if it was about revenge, I could have done this years ago. They tried to sue me over, um, you know, their claims that I was somehow trying to steal their clients or to somehow interfere with their con contractual relationships with other employees or what have you, you know. And were you? No. No, I mean, I, first of all, like, I don't want to work for the alt-right. The, the notion that I would want to somehow recreate Cambridge Analytica is for me personally absurd because why would I, why would I, why would I leave? If I wanted to recreate Cambridge Analytica, I should have just stayed, right? But I didn't, I chose to leave. He is the data scientist who helped weaponize the data, who embroiled in a growing Facebook scandal, now feels tainted by the new political order he thinks he helped create but he knows all about the power a carefully directed message can have. He did it for Cambridge Analytica back then, just as he's doing it against them now. Well, Andy Davis is outside Cambridge Analytica's headquarters, not far from me here in central London, and our Washington correspondent, Kylie Morris, is in DC. Let's go to you, Andy, first. This is new territory, isn't it, for Facebook and, of course, for Cambridge Analytica? Absolutely new territory and it's already turned into a vicious war of words between Cambridge Analytica and their former director of research. Cambridge Analytica, of course, are no strangers to criticism. They've got many, many vocal opponents. But Chris Wiley, who incidentally was introduced to us by Carol Cadwallader of The Observer, who's done so much on this story, he's not a politician, he's not a journalist, he's a former insider there at the start with rare insight. So this is going to hurt this company as will their suspension from Facebook, which is arguably hugely serious for such a social media savvy organisation as theirs. And on that subject, I think there are very serious questions for Facebook on this. They knew about this data use over two years ago. So why has it taken until now for them to publicly acknowledge it in this way? Should they have notified users at the time? And in light of the report today which suggests that some of that data may still be out there should they have done more controls to check that that data was deleted. It's not just Cambridge Analytica under pressure tonight. Back to you. Indeed. Uh, thanks, Daniel. Well, let's go to Kylie uh, in Washington. What's been the reaction there, Kylie? 
Well, Matt, remember, this, of course, is the data company that claims to have been crucial to the electoral victory of Donald Trump. Steve Bannon was its vice president before he became chief strategist in the White House. So this all matters enormously here in terms of the bona fides of this administration and the way in which Donald Trump attained high office. Already we're hearing reactions from Congress, where, of course, intelligence committees in the House and the Senate are investigating the conduct of the 2016 elections. The House committee has indeed already heard uh, evidence from Alexander Nix, the CEO of Cambridge Analytica. No doubt they now have more questions for him and, of course, for Facebook. And the Daily Beast, in fact, is equating the Senate Minority Leader of the Intelligence Committee, that's Senator Mark Warner, as saying that this is all evidence that online political advertising is essentially the Wild West, whether it's allowing Russians to purchase political ads or extensive micro-targeting based on ill-gotten user data. And one state, I should add, the state of Massachusetts, the Attorney General there, has announced that she's launching an investigation into the whole matter on behalf of residents who she says deserve answers immediately, not only from Facebook, but also from Cambridge Analytica. So this is really reverberating across every level of government, and it's just the start with more stories to follow this one, as over a number of months, Channel 4 Investigations team were in fact able to position themselves as a potential client to discover precisely how it is that Cambridge Analytica sells themselves. And in a series of undercover meetings, they said things not just shocking, but that could really potentially transform how we understand political campaigning works in the modern era. So that's to come over the next few days. But for now, it's back to you in London. Thanks, Kanye. And yes, we will have more on this story in the coming days. I've been getting away with it all